Hey, welcome back. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know who I am, I'm Jax, Jax Mackey. And I've been working on this fan for a while now, trying to get it ready to, um, to do some traveling. Uh, a couple things that, that came to uh, came to head here recently was uh, a problem with my water. Now, the other day I decided to impromptu uh, excursion, uh, decided that I was going to um, go to a local park and you know cook some dinner and kick. I got out to the van uh, was gonna pretty much had everything I needed I was just gonna you know check make sure everything was was okay inside and before I headed out and I, I heard my water pump running it was running you know non-stop so that concerned me because well I'm out of water you know 30 gallons of water was empty uh, and then the other concern was, well, how long was that pump been running? Now, um, I had um, been out of town for several days, so who knows how long the pump was running. Up to my, my house, and I refilled the tank. Uh, unfortunately, the pump wouldn't, uh, wouldn't prime or wouldn't you know, pull water, so I was a little concerned that I, I, I blew out the pump. You know, I don't know how long uh, a dry pump uh, of this nature will, will last, uh, you know, without, you know, lubrication of the water in there. So um, I, I pulled the pump apart, looked at it. It had some, you know, uh, calcium deposits, not really extravagant or anything, but I cleaned it up with soap and water, put it all back together, put it back in the, in the, in the van and um, had some trouble priming it. But eventually I got the the water uh, flowing through the pump and, and now it's an active system again. Um, but the problem that I got here is essentially the water filtration system that I'm using is an RO uh, based, it has a membrane. And when you have an RO system with a membrane, there's always going to be waste water or, or a byproduct. And the system, I don't know what the percentage of waste water to good water is but if I if for some reason the check valve on the RO system isn't you know working properly or if the pressure isn't correct then I'm gonna have um, the water pump is gonna be pumping water through the RO system and then there's gonna be waste water so eventually um, the system will run out of the water and if I'm not here out in the van checking it out all the time then um, I, I'm gonna have a problem now obviously if I'm out on the road full-time that's something that's gonna be on my mind uh, but here at home I, I'm not really looking at the amount of water that I got on a daily basis so I haven't figured out what my usage is gonna be uh, once I calculate once I use the van enough times I'll kind of have an idea am I gonna have to go three days can I go seven days can I go ten days before I gotta fill that sort of thing so I do have the pump on a on a breaker switch down on the main panel uh, which you know I could use to turn on and off the water uh, but I figured what would be nice is to have um, a switch over here right by the sink um, that would turn on and off the pump um, when I'm you know when I when I really need it you know as you know, the breakers there in case of a major fault but having a, a switch up here by the sink it'd be super handy um, then I can just turn it on and then I'll have pump and uh, regardless of whether or not the RO system uh, remains in 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 in, uh, in prime or in, in pressure um, I won't use any any water until I'm ready to use the water and then I'll be I'll be there meaning like I, I won't the pump won't run uncontrollably without me knowing about it per se uh, so that's what I'm going to install today um, I thought about running wires but the wires it's got to be real difficult to run wires in behind stuff now um, I guess I could have probably tried to plan ahead and, and put a switch in but I didn't uh, I didn't think about that and didn't think it was a you know a need or a use uh, so I found this this wireless uh, setup here um, this is the switch which sort of matches um, the light switches that I've already got and then this wireless uh, receiver here that connects um, to the to the wires, um, and it just turns it on and off uh, remotely. So we're going to install this today to um, fix that problem, or to you know sort of bolster the use 
um, of it, and then it's it's uh, it's got a light on it, so the the switch will light up apparently when there's power, so I'll know when it's on, um, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty cool. So I got that to install, and then um, I picked up this um, rotary switch and uh, reversing with it's it's coupled with a reversing switch, and this this is going to go. Um, the solution to my other problem that popped up which is uh, the temperature inside of my electrical cabinet now I've got the uh, inverter charger in there and I've got my PC in there um, and those two generate you know a bit of heat especially when I'm using the induction cooktop that inverter really kicks out quite a bit now I've got a temperature sensor and it's uh, I got a, a, a screen here that tells me uh, how hot uh, that cabinet space is and the other day when I was using it um, I it was like up to 115 uh, Fahrenheit um, which you know I, I suspect that's probably gonna be fairly typical use um, you know when I'm using it hard and it was probably 10 or 15 degrees difference from ambient um, but basically what I want to do is I want to move air in and out of the cabinet um, you know evacuate the hot air bring in the cooler air from the ambient uh, in, into the cabinet to help keep that system in there cooler um, um, so I decided that I would just um, never mind an automatic system and go with more of a manual system so I've got this and what this switch will do is it's got a rotary dial on here so I can control the RPMs of the fan um, just by this and then it also has the switch here which is um, well this sounds like there's an on off here um, but it also has an on off here but what this is does also is it reverses the polarity so I can you know reverse the fans from blowing in to blowing out um, so that'll be kind of neat uh, to be able to do that should bite down on here pretty good yeah no they'll be fine they'll be fine there we go perfect Alright, so that's that. So we should be able to hook this up to there. Yeah, this one up to there. Uh, then we gotta, then we gotta see about this switch if it's got a battery in it. battery is that it's pretty freaking small is that a that is no way a 
trip away. What the heck kind of battery is that? There's no way that fits in there. No, what is that? Oh no. All right, so according to the instructions, uh, these A23s should be what I need. So let's see if I can get this installed and, uh, and test it out. Well, um, I got duped. Yep, I got duped. Uh, so the Amazon listing specifically states 12 volts. Um, you know, you would, there's a big difference between like a 12 volt system and a 120 or 240 volt system. Um, now the listing didn't discern between uh, AC or DC, but anytime you you know you have something that is listed that right in the title of the of the unit, it's 12 volts. You typically assume 12 volts DC. So I purchased this switch with the intent of using it as a 12 volt switch um, but I'm looking at the instructions and unfortunately um, the wireless the, the receiver part um, is not 12 volts it's it's a the rated voltage uh, for this receiver is a hundred volts to 240 volts AC which means you know it's standard household power um, why it would why the description would specifically state 12 volts is 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 beyond me I mean I don't I don't understand it the you know the 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 the, the switch part runs on a battery which is 12 volts but the unit is is a 120 volt unit <laughs> you know <laughs> it's the receiver, as far as I can tell, I can't get it to, I mean, it's it's flashing on 12 volts. Um, like I'm trying to pair the switch um, with, the, with the receiver. And, you know, we're getting, we're getting flashes here on the receiver, um, which indicates that, you know, something's working okay so just for the sake of making sure that i was looking at this correctly and that um you know the unit is actually functioning as it is intended to function i grabbed a chunk of uh wire and i've got it plugged into a 110 volt outlet here and so the the unit isn't flashing like it was on the 12 volt system and then of course when i hit the switch the receiver the light turns on indicating that it's in fact in, in the on position and in functioning correctly so uh, with that said this will not work uh, on a 12 volt system uh, like the uh, Amazon posting sort of describes I mean everything that's on that posting is 12 volts there is no mention whatsoever um, of a volts uh, AC whatsoever so uh, that sort of sucks for me because now I got a wireless switch for you know uh, an AC uh, wireless receiver and, and switch that I can't use for the 12 volt system that I wanted to use it for so uh, okay so uh, I've got a new switch a 12 volt um, switch ordered uh, it's gonna be similar to, to this uh, with the exception of its rated for 12 volts um, the difference between the other one, or the, this one that I've got now, is that, um, and the one that I just ordered was, um, they didn't show the back of this unit in any of the photos on, in the advert, so I wasn't able to, you know, verify the rating on that. Um, the one that I, I just ordered, um, you could clear as a bell, you know, see on the unit that was rated for 12 volts. Um, I wasn't actually taking, 
you know, the word of, you know, I'm, I dare to say Amazon, but that's where I bought it. But I mean, it's not Amazon. It's necessarily Amazon's fault. It's the person that, or the company that lists the product didn't do a very good job of listing it accurately. So, uh, hence why I got the wrong one. So, what I've done now is I've uh, pretty much undid um, what I did uh, to install the switch, and I have the pump uh, wired in direct. Uh, so we should be able to just turn on uh, the pump now. And of course, you may have heard that there. You're hearing it now um, cycling uh, to bring up the pressure in the system. So uh, hopefully things are working uh, as intended there. Um, you know, obviously if, because I, I did, um, I, I, ran, I ran the drinking water uh, to fill these two uh, ice coffee, um, two quarts of ice coffee. Um, so th this is going to cycle now for a minute while the water, um, or while it builds pressure back up and, and cycles and fills up the uh, the holding tank for the, the RO system. So with that said, I'm going to move on now to this rotary switch uh, for the the exhaust fan in the electrical compartment. And I've got a piece of this plastic here. Uh, that I think will work just just fine. Um, I figured that I'm going to need about a two and a half inch piece, uh, two and a half, three maximum, um, that will fit in between here, in between the two panels, and then I can screw that in place, and then uh, that'll be super duper. Uh, perhaps if I make it, I don't need to make it um, full length, but if I go ahead and just make it this long and put that in the middle that should work out just fine so that's what we're going to do we'll make it like we'll make it two and three quarters there'll be a little bit of a, a gap between the panels and then i could just uh you know drill out a spot for this uh to work and, and figure out how i'm going to cut the whole square hole for this switch but we'll we'll get to that when we get to it okay all right so i've got um I got this taped up and uh, marked out for the, the switch and the rotary dial. And then I'll probably have to um, I'll lay out four, uh, four fastening holes uh, also. We'll just put some four screws in this to hold that in place. And that should be, uh, should be good. All right, so that was easy. I just scored it with a knife and uh, snapped it right off. So that worked out pretty slick. So now, just gonna take some sandpaper and clean this up a little bit. All right, so I got those. Uh, I got that cleaned up and rounded off. I, I'm pretty confident that I had these fans working. Uh, they're four wire fans, but uh, for the life of me, I can't get neither one of them to, uh, to power up now. Uh, I, I've tried all combinations of wires. Uh, I know that the power to my uh, power to my, my switch uh, was good because I, I used an LED light, uh, so I've got that installed. Um, not exactly sure how this switch is going to work now that I'm thinking about it. Um, a lot of the 12 volt stuff 
um, that I know of so far is polarity sensitive. So that's what basically what I was understood that this switch did was reverse polarity so that the fans would, um, you know, reverse in direction. Um, but the, uh, the variable speed seems to work. Um, I had a couple of uh, extra fans from an old PC, uh, 120 millimeter fans. They're old Cooler Masters. And they're a, they're a three wire fan, uh, so I was able to test those to a point where they would work. So I went ahead and swapped the uh, other fans out with those, and I got the switch installed. So now when I turn the switch on, um, these fans are are working just fine. Now they're they're not loud at all. I can't even hear them. So and they are blowing out. So they're going to draw the hot air out of the cabinet. So that much is done. Now obviously, uh, I'm not guaranteeing those fans. So I'm going to have to look into uh, possibly, you know, what other options I've got. Uh, order another set of suitable fans as a backup replacement. Uh, obviously, like I said, I don't know how long these are going to last. These are probably... 10 or 15 years old these fans uh, they haven't been used in a long time maybe they're not that old um i'm not even sure if they came they're a cooler master fan they may have came with um uh, a cooler um or they came out of my old pc when i got a new cooler and upgraded they may have been the old fans uh, but either way they're probably maybe they're not 15 years they're they're probably eight to ten years old anyways so with that said uh, they're in there and they're working, so that's that's the that's the main thing. So I think it looks uh, pretty god darn clean uh, with that switch. Now I just got to get uh, I just got to get my plexiglass cover uh, back on there, and and then that will be done. And that's super easy. Um, made a huge mess out of my van. Thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to check out next week's video, and if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe.